one other thing that I would like people to know that no one who would want to leave their home country, leave their family, leave their parents, their sibling, leave their familiar places to leave whatever they have to another country. As a refugee from Vietnam, we were forced out of Vietnam right in the 1975 after the war of Vietnam. So after the war of Vietnam, April 30th, 1975, when American troops and government withdrew from Vietnam, a lot of Southern Vietnamese have put into tormented oppression and everything else. So a lot of people have fled their country and been smuggled out by boat. So the Vietnamese who escaped from Vietnam was named as boat people, and I was one of them. Up to 1981, after living six, seven years with the um, new regime, the communist regime, my parents realized that I have no future in Vietnam. Um, they decided to smuggle me out from Vietnam. Um, they uh, bought a, a, almost a ticket on the little teeny tiny boat um, the boat is not very worthy to travel out to the open sea. But you know what? We all risk our life for freedom. So on the boat, there was 135 people, including me, travel to the open sea with hope to find freedom. The journey was not easy. The journey was, I have to say, and it is hard for me to describe this, but it was a, a journey that no one that I would wish to travel as such. Uh, as soon as we traveled out to the open sea, um, we got um, stopped by local fishermen from Thailand. That's then, that then we begin to experience what pirates on the sea was like. Um, we have been through that experiences um, for five different times. Um, every time we got stopped by the f local fishermen, uh, we was robbed, raped, um, tortured. Um, but the one thing that I remember the most was one time we got stopped by three of them at the same time. Uh, so three of them actually corralled us um, and took all the young women and women uh, to their boats and left all the men back on our little boat. Uh, that the night, I would say, the longest night of my life, um, to witness um, the tragedies uh, of uh, leaving the country, losing hope, losing your family. Um, the gleam of hope to be alive was so little uh, out in the open sea. Listening my fellow Vietnamese uh, being raped, the cry uh, in the deep dark night, um, even the wave of the ocean that night, you know, it, it, it was so loud, but it could not overcome, could not overcome the crying from the lady being robbed and raped. Um, as young men at the time, we were stripped naked. As I remember, it was very humiliated experience. Uh, of a humankind, but we were stripped naked, we were hurled up to the t top of the cabin. Uh, up in the cabin, I remember I witnessed one gentleman being killed because he fought back. Um, three little, um, very dark skin, I guess they had been out in the sea fishing for a number of years. Um, three of them actually, two held each of his hand, and the third one actually jumped on his head, uh, tried to sink him. And I was right there uh, from the cabin looking down and hoped that he would come back, but he never did. It's about 10 seconds later, but it was the longest things that you could ever imagine. The three gentlemen came back up, um, and the man that they um, sunk was not there. 
I sat there, I remember I sat there the entire evening until the, the, uh, the darkness of the, uh, the sky. And uh, very, you know, we traveled out the monsoon season, so the wave was high. But I remember I sat there and praying that he would come back and he would be safe. But um, for the longest, uh, he wasn't back up. So I realized that our life at that moment was not very much. Uh, you didn't know what to do. You, you, at that time, you lose hope. You, you lose everything, you, you know. Um, and I remember that moment. Um, you couldn't cry, but you were crying. Uh, we were very fortunate. The next morning, they released all the uh, women and young women, except one. Um, so they allow us to travel on. Uh, and as soon as we travel on, uh, we got stopped and again got robbed and raped again. So we, we've been through it f five different times with different uh, time that we got in different experience that we receive. But you could never, I could never forget these things and, and hope you remember this. If somebody come to you and rob and rape you and that person was whipping because they saw your condition, you could imagine how bad we looked as a human at the time. Um, I remember the, the pirate who was robbing us at the very last time. He was looking at us and he was whipping. He was crying uh, to see the condition that we, they was in. And he was the one who was about to rob us, you know, and rape the woman. Um, I could never forget that image. It's been there with me for 35 plus years now. So uh, we were very fortunate enough. We got, um, we fought all the way in. Um, we finally got safe um, by a tanker. Um, we uh, got resettled into uh, Bangkok um, and processed uh, through the UNHCR. Um, I was very fortunate to be able to prove my identity, uh, my family background, and the reason why I have left Vietnam and been smuggled out of Vietnam. So the United States government uh, have decided to pick up my case. And that's the reason I came to Des Moines, Iowa, and started my new life. You know, when you live in the camp, when you realize that you have a chance to come to the United States, you realize that you are going to be in a country with so much and so many opportunities in life you couldn't help but be so excited for that. That was the case for me. I was so happy when my name was called on the intercom that I get to resettle in the United States to the Des Moines city of the state of Iowa. Uh, to be honest, at the time in the camp, not too many people know where Des Moines is, but I was just happy to be in Des Moines. I just happy to be able to be in the United States. So when I came to the state, I was very excited because I um, expect a lot of good things happening for us. Uh, I expect, you know, so many things. But as soon as I came, um, I realized that is not what it is. Um, I didn't have my family with me. I didn't have the family support. I didn't have what I need to survive. I didn't have the language. I didn't understand the culture. I didn't have what it needed to be done to help me to build a new life. That 1982, 83. But then I get to know the name of Governor Ray. Um, I heard a lot about Governor Ray, the work he did back in the 76, 77, when he 
Auburn, Iowa, uh, Iowan Heart Homes, Community Churches. Um, I heard of people telling me how the resettlement back then was like, you get into a new family, the family will help you to integrate into the new setting, help you learn English, help you in the beginning so you can build your new life. And I realized that, oh, I didn't have that opportunity. Um, because I was a single man at the age of 21, almost 22. No family got to take me in as a young man as such. But understand his legacy, understand Governor, Governor Ray work, I understand why I'm here. I'm here for the reason that um, to prove that a human can survive with all odds, and that's what it is. And Governor Ray really gave opportunities, which is all his courage, you know. It's, 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 um, if you remember back in 75, Vietnamese refugee was not um, being approved by American, by the government. If you read statistics, less than 50% of American would want the Vietnamese refugee come to come into the United States. But our, be, our beloved governor at the time stood up and said, we take them. Uh, I remember the story he was telling uh, a group of us um, when I got to know him. Oh, Ambassador Quinn can tell the, the story that he was um, watching TV. And he was watching a, a clip from Mr. Bradley uh, from CBS, um, how both people tried to survive. When um, he saw that clip, he said, we have to do something. And that's what he did. He opened up homes, calling on people to take on the refugee from Vietnam. Um, that say a lot about the man that we all refugee love. Um, I know in certain community they call uh, him as the godfather of refugee. Um, to me, he's just the man of all the characteristics with passion. Um, that because of him, many of us who are refugees have new opportun opportunity, have new life. Um, as you can see, many of us who came from that era have been very successful, very productive citizens, and that the work that he wishes for, I mean, to, to help people in need so they can be successful. What a, a great legacy that he has left for us.